Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. Today we're taking a look at one of the most interesting running shoe technologies available right now. It's the Adidas 4D FWD2. It's the second version. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, I didn't have a chance to preview this video and this final synopsis is my own. I also like to say, please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. The Adidas 4D FWD2 is a neutral setup meant for casual running and or lifestyle wear. It's kind of a performance sneaker and or sneaker head sneaker. So it kind of has its foot in both camps, pun intended. This shoe costs $200, mainly because the midsole is 3D printed. I'll go into all of those details later on in the review. It does come in at a substantial 12.4 ounces, which is on the heavier end of things. And as far as stack height goes, with this very interesting setup, it's gonna be 32 millimeters in the heel, and I believe 20 in the four foot four 12 millimeter drop. So kind of in line with the Ultra Boost setup. The upper has been updated this year to a two material approach. The first material being Prime Knit Plus. It's this black material here that gives you that sock-like fit. Very stretchy, very elastic, rather comfortable. But to contain this elastic material, they use this white engineered mesh material, which is a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more well-structured and keeps everything well-contained. So that's a more conventional, typical engineered mesh. So this two-layered approach gives you some elastic sock-like feel and a more conventional locked-in fit, which I think pairs nicely off each other. Now, to combine these two, they have this kind of rubberized uh, or kind of plastic overlay that connects the prime knit and the engineered mesh to give you a very seamless, consistent feel. I thought the upper was very comfortable. It's a very snug experience, and I think it does run a half size small. My toe is pretty much at the end, even though I was in my correct size, so I do recommend going up half a size. But overall, it's very snug, very comfortable, kind of sock-like feel with that containment along the edges of more traditional engineered mesh. There is no tongue here. It's kind of what you expect from a knit upper. It's all one piece, very seamless, very consistent feel with a more dense material at the top that is rather elastic as well. The back of the shoe has also been updated. You have a very sturdy, very strict heel counter with a large elf air pull tab that does help you get in and out of this shoe. Now I will say because this heel counter is so massive and so sturdy, I did have some rubbing with my ankle bone on the side. So it is rather aggressive. However, because it is so large, I thought the lockdown uh, was superb. I didn't have any heel lift, which I think is quite important when you have a shoe like this with a single piece knit upper. The laces don't have to do so much, mainly because it is a snug fit and it runs about a half size small. So I felt very locked into this plastic platform and I didn't feel like my foot was going anywhere despite the elastic nature of that prime knit. As far as the breathability goes, I was quite surprised, especially because this is a knit shoe and knit shoes tend to run warmer. The breathability is definitely decent, it's nothing amazing, but I was quite surprised by the level of ventilation that this prime knit brought. The outsole has been upgraded to continental rubber. Adidas does this with their more premium shoes, so I'm happy to see they brought it to this model. Just a slightly higher quality of rubber. Now you do get a decent slab from heel to toe, full rubber coverage here with moderate lugs. I thought the grip worked well, and you do have a solid amount of surface area to grip the ground with. And onto the midsole, this is a 3D printed setup, which may be confusing because if you look at the name of this shoe, it says 4D and not 3D. So why is it 4D? Well, according to Adidas, yes, the midsole is 3D printed. However, that fourth dimension, that extra dimension is the Adidas experience and all the competitive advantages and research that Adidas brings into this shoe. So it's a little bit of marketing, a little bit of hype there, but it's an extra dimension that Adidas brings to the 3D printed midsole. So they went with 4D. This 3D printed midsole has a very interesting manufacturing method. They use something called a carbon digital light synthesis. So they have a special light that projects an image with a certain pattern on it onto this liquid called resin. And then they just move it up slightly as it starts to solidify or cure. And they do layer by layer as they slowly kind of lift it out of this liquid. And then you have this full structure. They take the full structure, they bake it at a super high temperature, and then it fully solidifies, giving us this very interesting look lattice structure. Now, now, Adidas has been working on this according to them for like 18 years. They've had millions of versions that they narrowed it down to this particular setup. And the reason this is special is it doesn't just collapse and provide, like, I guess, squish or cushion. It collapses forward, or at least according to Adidas, where you kind of run and it pushes you forward. So it's a very interesting setup here and is probably the most unique midsole I have ever run in. And as a cool side note, you can practically see right through the midsole light shines right through with these individual, I guess, little strands that create the lattice-like structure. It just has a unique sensation when you put it on. It feels unlike anything else I've ever tried before. 
So that begs the question, why does Adidas care so much about 3D printed midsoles? Well, I think this is more of a future goal where you can go to an Adidas store or run specialty store, they'll scan your foot and then just print you a custom midsole while you're at the store. So kind of like a custom insert, but in case in, instead of an insert, it's gonna be a custom midsole that's perfectly tailored to every curve, arch, and support need that your foot has. So quite an interesting approach here. We'll see if it actually plays out that way. But for right now, we kind of have the, the one size fits all 3D approach. As far as the feel goes, it has a moderate level of compression to it. You notice it mainly in the back of the shoe because you have this extended heel region. So you just have a, a, just a ton of midsole here. It becomes much more firm towards the forefoot. And I will say, I think it looks uh, a lot softer than it actually is. You look at all these little strands, you'd expect them to collapse fairly easily and provide a super soft rod, but I don't think that is the case here. It has kind of like a middle of the road uh, level of squish and cushion, at least in my opinion. With regard to the forward collapsing midsole or how the midsole is kind of designed to kind of collapse forward and kind of push you forward, I didn't really have a noticeable experience while running. When I was walking, you kind of noticed it a little bit more because there's more ground contact time. Uh, it's a little bit slower and there's less energy just going directly through the midsole. So you kind of notice it while walking, but while running, it just feels like a moderately cushioned neutral shoe. The shoe is rather flexible. It has a nice flow to it, it kind of moves with your foot. It's not that rigid, uh, which is another thing I was kind of worried about with this structure here. And the other interesting piece is your foot actually does sit directly pretty much on top of this 3D printed material. You have the insert and then the 3D printed material. There's no stroll board there's no plastic plate or anything it just goes insert or basically goes your foot insert and then a 3d printed material which is quite surprising so at the end of the day is this a runnable shoe and i'll say yes you can run in it it works fine it performs as a running shoe however i wouldn't say it's optimal uh, with regard to daily training or it's not probably not the best option if you're looking for true performance mainly because it's 12.4 ounces and i don't think this midsole offers the best energy return for the weight um, so that's a big trade-off to look at now this shoe is for someone who wants kind of that cutting edge technology likes to try out new things i would almost consider this kind of like a forefront concept shoe we all know concept shoes everything hasn't been fleshed out completely it's not optimized but it just looks cool and just offers uh, kind of an insight into what the future brings so this shoe kind of has its foot in two camps one the sneakerhead camp it's a unique shoe that just looks cool it'll turn heads it's a great conversation starter and then two it has its foot in the camp of performance running you can definitely run in it it's not a bad shoe to run in maybe not might not be optimal i don't know if I'd recommend it for performance running, but it definitely works as a running shoe um, compared to like other sneakerhead sneakers. So it, it's an interesting setup here. It's an interesting proposition. If you're a true runner who's looking for a hardcore daily training shoe, I'd probably go in a different direction. There's more optimal setups and a lighter, bouncier, softer package. However, if you're a, you know, a sneaker fan who likes running as well and you want to take one shoe, have a great conversational starter piece, I think this might do it. Just a very interesting setup.